Hey, this is Dr. Sean over at Natural Body Works, and we're going to talk about discs. That's a little squishy thing in the middle there. This is the uh, model of the spine bones. These are actually a couple of uh, lumbar or lower back uh, bones here, and I've drawn kind of like an easy diagram of a top view, looking down on it this way. This is the back. This is the front um, here, and then over here, the back view, looking straight at it like that, and then over here on the side view, um, looking at the side, this being the front, over that way and this being the back, like this. So anyway, here's what we're going to talk about. I want to show you a little bit about the way the disc and disc injuries work. Now, with a disc injury, you're liable to have numbness, tingling, burning sensation. Um, over a long period of time, you can get muscle loss. You can even get hair loss on the area. That's called a trophic change. Um, <clears throat> we want to kind of check each of these individually. If it just started out, usually it's just an inflammation process. And you get a little inflammation like in this corner over here or something like that. When that happens, it can press on this, which is the nerve. The nerve goes out to the different areas of the body. The lumbar or lower back go down to the legs. The back of the leg, that would be a typical sciatica. Sometimes it goes to the front of the leg or the big toe or anything like that. Depends on where it goes. That can give us an idea of what segment we're actually looking at. We can look at, uh, for example, if there's pain or numbness in between the big toe and the next toe, it's probably around L5. If it's a little bit higher than that, like around the knee, probably around L3. If it's in the groin, probably L1 and L2. So this is one way we can decide which side it's on and what level it's on. Now, depending on what it does when you lean side to side or back or forward um, and how much the muscles are spasm, which we'll get into it whole other time and that's where you get into things like dry needling and um, massage work and electrical stem and stuff like that. When we have a disc injury, how do you get a disc injury you ask? Well, good question. Well, one, if you imagine you laid on the couch for a couple hours like this and you stretch that neck open on this side, that joint eventually, just like this one, oops, just like this one here, would be squished. Oops, and that doesn't happen, hopefully. If it happens to you, ugh. Anyway, squishes like this and it can stay. That's called joint creep. Happens over just a couple minutes and then you try to move too fast. Ugh, you can tear a little bit of that possibly. Other things we got to worry about in here is in the disc area and through here is, is it desiccated? ATD, desiccated, which means dried out. You ever have a sponge where you're trying to like get water in it and you crumble and it, it crumbles apart? That's exactly what those do. So staying hydrated and keeping range of motion going is essential to lumbar. Uh, all of the discs. Every single joint in the body work by movement. They don't move unless there's muscle action, of course. But if they move in their normal range and smoothly over a constant time, what happens is they create more synovial fluid. They draw in more um, blood, more nutrients, and help get rid of the toxins that every cell makes. So for example, if you're someone who's actually never moving very much, and your, your body sits like this, and you just sit, 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 and you don't drink any water, you get this squishy kind of thing going. And see how this little part here, this is where the nerve goes through actually, comes out the side over here. Ding, ding. There's the spinal cord. Here's the spinal cord. That's the orange stuff. The red, the blue stuff in here and here and here. That's the disc. That's this little gray thing right here. So if that keeps moving and it always moves, for example, it moves forward and back and it moves side to side and you get these like normal ranges of motion, generally we don't have as much problem. If it sits statically and dehydrates and you have other injuries like you lift too much or you lift the wrong way or a muscle spasm, that can cause eventual degeneration. We see some people usually over 35, 40 years old, we start to see degeneration. Totally you can stop it. Totally you can fix that if you start moving. So movement is key. Movement is life to the joints. That's like one of my big mottos. And any joint from finger joints to jaw joints, anything like that, if it gets in its normal range, normal articulation or what we call juxtaposition, the relationship to the next one, and moves then it creates synovial fluid. That's a fluid that helps uh, loosen and, and uh, uh, lubricate the joint, usually in the hyaline joints. That's the, you know, these guys, the peripheral joint, the elbows and all that stuff. In the spine, those are fibrous joints. It's a little bit different, but same idea. So anyway, spinal cord, this vertebral canal here, this central canal that goes all the way down, 
is where the, the spinal cord is. Now, it looks like it's floating around in there. It really doesn't float around in there. There's actually a covering around it called the dura, which goes like this. And then around that in this area, and this area in here, it's all fat or other connective tissue and stuff like that. If those get misplaced or you have any injury to those, that can swell up and basically put pressure on that nerve. You put pressure on that nerve, even as much as like a dime, it'll reduce its ability to function by 50%. Um, one of the things we, we find is that some people have no pain when they sit or no pain when they stand or no pain when they move. So this depends on how the relationship. Taking an x-ray, taking an MRI is good. You'll get the idea of what's going on in here. But if you don't take a... Um, the best ones to take are actually standing up x-rays, standing up MRIs if we could, because that would tell us how much squishiness we've got in that thing. Now, if you're laying down and we take it, a lot of times the... the, the alignment and everything kind of changes as you lay down and we may get not the best information. So small discs on an MRI because you're laying down might be even bigger when you're standing up. My two tests for people who have a disc injury and if I can't I, if I can't help you here's how I know if you can't walk on your heels like we on your with your t toes up like walk around on your heels or walk on your tippy toes if you can't do that probably not gonna do well with chiropractic, in my opinion. Now, it takes lots of work. If you have any numbness, tingling, burning, cramping, you should be really seen every single day until that starts to go away. Now you're saying, oh my God, every single day, that's a lot. Yeah, sometimes twice a day. Just because we wanna make sure and get that joint back where it should be, right? And loosen the muscles around it so the muscles can go, oh, that's what we're supposed to do? I didn't know we were supposed to be like this. I thought we were like this. And then once you get it back, those muscles can start to retrain themselves and you can kind of get them to uh, uh, do what you want them to do instead of do what they want, want to do. Now, of course, it's painful. It depends on your evaluation of the pain. The pain 10 for you could be a 2 for me and vice versa, depending on what you've had in the past. Fear also is going to increase that pain. So if you're worried more about it, it's going to increase. Other things to work about, uh, to work about, to worry about if you have a, a massive back injury, um, even a small back injury. Most injuries that I've seen, I've been doing this for over 20 years, and here's the thing. With disc injuries, it's never falling out of a tree. I've never had anyone who fell out of a train or uh, hit by a truck. I mean, it happens, and they have other issues, of course, but usually the people with these disc issues tend to be things like reaching for remote controls, turning around the back seat, lifting a small bag of groceries, lifting a kid, having a kid spaz out on you when you're lifting him and they lean over and that causes your back to spasm, shoveling snow the next day is when it gets you, washing your hair, brushing your teeth, uh, standing up, sitting down, whatever those kind of things. Actually, two of the best stories I have, uh, three of the best stories I have. One, guy came in, he had slipped on a pickle, which is weird, but anyway, another guy, he was actually, had to be carried in the office, he was dipping a chip into salsa. I don't know how heavy or what that chip was made of, but it's a restaurant I've gone to many times. It, was, it shouldn't have been a big deal, but the way he just happened to move, it flared up. Third one was a guy who uh, was a uh, uh, like a mail carrier for FedEx or whatever, and he came in on his knees and couldn't get up. What he did is he put the towel on his head to dry his hair, reached down, and when he came back, his back spasmed up. Ten, turns out he had a disc. Um, other people that I've had to have discs in the past 20-something years, I've only sent three for surgery uh, because uh, there's nothing I could have, I really couldn't do anything. Others have ended up getting surgery because we either couldn't get it to uh, loosen up, but that's still less than three or four people. Now, what happens is the people who end up doing that, they've injured it bad enough that no matter what anyone else would do, you can't fix it. you got to have surgery. I mean, it's just one of those things. If you're having back surgery, go for a neurologist first because you want to get the... That's around nerve. Don't monkey around that, right? So we want to have someone really do the, the work and have as minimally evasive as possible. We don't want to have big surgeries, hopefully, because a lot of surgeries fail. They don't tell you that. There's actually a code. There's actually a, a an actual diagnosis of failed back surgery syndrome. And so, yeesh. Let's try everything else first. Acupuncture, dry needling, uh, gua sha, stretching, yoga, uh, which is what I did for me. Um, chiropractic, uh, massage, I don't know what I said yet already, but anyway, to try everything else. 
um, before, if you can. Um, so, anyway, back view. Here we have the, the, the nerve come through here. If you pinch it off, you'll get nothing down to the other end. How do we move it? That's the next question. One, we can move it with stretching, like I said. It's slow movement. It's um, uh, over time. We want to get a little bit of movement in those muscles and loosen them up. We, I always use dry or moist heat, actually. I don't like dry heat so much. People ask, well, if I have an injury here, should I use heat or ice? I like ice and heat. You can use ice for 10 minutes, nothing for 10 minutes, and then heat for 10 minutes because ice will shrink down the inflammation, leave it alone for a few minutes, and then it'll come back to normal, and then heat will sedate and loosen the muscles and rush some blood back in there. So, again, anyway, this is Dr. Sean over at uh, Natural Body Works. Give us a call if you have a back problem. Um, I'll leave the number here. Uh, questions, let me know. I have other videos. Look, I have ones with my long hair and everything of me doing stretches exactly for this. I've had this, and I luckily didn't have to have surgery. Uh, I did a lot of yoga. I did a lot of stretching. Got a lot of adjustments. Muscle stim, um, chiropractic, uh, massage therapy, acupuncture, dry needling, all that jazz. So it helped me. So um, that's, I think, it for this one. I'll, I'll do more in the next video, uh, so don't forget to sub subscribe, which is I think right down here or down here somewhere. Subscribe, leave me a comment. Um, actually, in my last video, I got a lot of phone calls from people from New York City and from uh, Texas, so thank you guys very much. Hopefully, everything worked out for you. Take care. This is Dr. Sean.